single player combat training demo that uh, backers, but non beta backers, have access to apparently as its own separate install. Which is interesting. I don't have that installed. Ah, there we go. Okay, we're back in business. So, let me get the controls over here, set up, so we can get going. Hmm. Okay, I am apparently unconnected from the server. Now I am apparently connected to the server. Start. Let's see if I got access to the other group. Ah, yes, the Mobius group. Let's join the Mobius group. Now the Mobius uh, Mobius server is a PVE server. Uh, Alright, it's a PVE group. The way that uh, groups work, uh, the way the gameplay modes in this game work, is that there's a one server. There is the world server, and this is this contains essentially all players in the game. Now, if you play in the open world, you have a, uh, a chance of running into other players. So, if you start in a populated area, or right now, I'm sure if everybody rushes to Saul, um, you will see other players. And if you um, play in a uh, solo mode, essentially you're still connected to the server, you're getting feeds from the server, so the uh, commodity market, which we looked at briefly whoops, last time, um, you'll see the effects of other players' actions on the commodity market. So, commodity market, so this right here, you'll actually see these things change, uh, it'll refresh itself every once in a while. That's also going to be, uh, look at um, it's also going to be NPC simulation as well as real players buying and selling stuff here. So actually, look at this tobacco uh, imported from 31 Aquilae. Good to know. Um, so if you want to play in, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting distracted. If you want to play in uh, in uh, group mode, well, the interesting thing about that is that you are still playing in the public server. However, you are playing in a bubble of your own group. So you will only see NPCs and essentially people in your group. So you won't run afoul of, of anybody you don't want to unless there's, you know, undesirables, quote unquote, in your group. Now the uh, the Mobius group is a PvE game. So we're all kind of dedicated to doing our own thing. Uh, there's no open PvP. Uh, you can go to, you can do PvP with others in um, in some of the conflict zones, though. So if you can nail down one of the conflict zones, you can go ahead and go there and beat the crap out of each other to your heart's content. So, let's see, we are here in Leiden. Last time, we went to Valungu, and we had such a hell of a time trying to map that thing um, that we kept uh, getting uh, interdicted and I posted an hour's worth of the video, but there was uh, like at least another half an hour to 45 minutes worth of me trying to fend off suitors who wanted to, you know, basically uh, take my cargo, which, since I have no cargo holds, they would have been sorely disappointed. But uh, I ended up simply running back to Leiden, just to dock, uh, for the sake of docking, so... Today, I don't know what the heck I want to do. So 31 Aquilae, that's where the tobacco came from. Last time, um, if you check... Actually, you won't be able to check out the video. If you did watch the stream last time, you'd, you'd remember that the uh, uh, we looked at the trade routes. Actually, one of the things that I did want to show, which I didn't, is uh, basically this This is this is me right here, Leiden. So here's Leiden, 31 Aquilae, LHS, uh, 3470, and the infamous Valungu. So if we pull out a little bit, what we're going to see is we're going to see some of these uh, labels out here. So there's Arcanar and Altair, and if you'll notice, we got Vega, and way out here, buried among all of these fine, fine folk, is Saul. So if we click on Saul, we need to do a system view. Now this is probably a no-brainer to anybody who's actually completed high school. 
as to what we're going to see, but here is our system in all of its glory. So, you know, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, which is showing up blue. I guess it's terraformed. Yeah, all right. So in the future, we've terraformed Mars. Yay us. Uh, we got our little, this is our, um, I forget what the name of this belt is, but the belt that exists separating the rocky planets from the gas planets. And then we have all of these fine folk, you know, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and then icy planet Pluto and little Charon. Um, we haven't found anybody else apparently in the future, but we've managed to terraform Mars. As far as stations go, we've got uh, Daedalus <coughs> Station here around Mercury. We've got a platform around Venus, and holy Jesus, several of them around <laughs> M. Gorbachev. Well, this is interesting. So, uh, Abraham Lincoln, U.S. Li Qing Zhao, which is apparently Chinese. M. Gorbachev, which is apparently Russian. And Galileo, and I don't know what the hell Galileo's for. I don't know what these are. Columbus? What kind of stations are those? Those are not Coriolis stations, are they? Mars High Orbit Sol Workers? Eventually I would like to get to Sol. Titan City around Titan. And Io. But nobody way out here. So, here's Sol, our familiar neighborhood. So, we don't need to go there. <laughs> we can't go there. Actually, we could go there. It would take us a really long time. I haven't been able to uh, find decent uh, application that, that could plot, but you'll see in a reason. Uh, plotted uh, a route from Leiden all the way to Sol. The system doesn't do it itself, unfortunately, because uh, that would be quote-unquote too easy. So instead we have to basically uh, plot manually or rely on the uh, community, which is, there's several projects which are uh, crowdsourcing, uh, you know, system name, distance to the systems around it, so it can come up with, a, with a, you know, more or less a quote-unquote comprehensive map, which would help uh, create actual um, uh, jump uh, plotting, so you could know which systems you need to go to. There is no automatic system-to-system -system jump um, like you would find in that game which shall be unnamed from this point on when I'm talking about it, um, where you land in a system and then you autopilot to the next gate and then you jump through and then you autopilot to the next gate and so on and so forth. There's none of that here. You have to do it all manually. So, community effort to get the plots uh, plotting done. So, there is no, no known route right now from where I am to Sol. But if you notice, uh, Frontiers made it um, made a, a, a great effort to make this as realistic as possible. So you have Sol here, Alpha Centauri, Sirius, um, Delta Pavonis, you got Riga out here somewhere, Barnard Star, uh, Luton, the LHSs, Van Manen Star. I did a little bit of work on doing something sort of like this. Um, for a game I was working on, uh, essentially a, a space trading game, and I uh, was looking for uh, star maps, and uh, these, I recognize a lot of these, a lot of these names, so I know that a lot of these, uh, Groombridge 34 and, and 61 Cygni, I know these are actual legitimate names, these are, these are actual stars that we know of. So, if we look uh, here, centered on Sol, our home base, and just to give you an idea um, about how big the playable area is, keep your eye on Sol. Keep your eye on Sol. We're just going to head out. Head out. Head out. Head out. Keep heading out. Keep heading out. Oh, yeah. Heading out. Here we go. There we go. Oh, uh, yes. Super sexy solar system. All right. So, what you got here, if you notice this, uh, my little uh, reticle here is going nuts. Um, this is where we are now. This is, this is, uh, this little pylon here is, is still Sol. Okay. So, we're going to go to places where no human being will ever be able to reach. Uh, certainly not in my lifetime. We're going to go ahead and we're going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in and 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 zoom in. And which we're going to see 
is this little guy. And we're gonna see this little guy. And this little guy. These are state these are these are systems. These are systems that the game has available to us. Now, it is uh, 49,000 light years away from Saul, I believe. That's from Saul, not from where I am. So, that would be many, many, many jumps. Many jumps. Um, that could be my lifelong goal if I wanted to try to get out to Ruggany BGGB240. <laughs> Um, I don't know what I'd find there. I would probably be all alone in doing so. But you'll notice as I mouse over, each one of these is actually its own system. So all of these are visitable if you've got the stamina. We can actually go ahead and we can uh, move our reticle someplace a little bit closer. Let's actually move to the core. Oh, yeah. What is at our core? Core of the galaxy. It's super bright. It is essentially a whole lot of brightness. I don't know what's going on here. I am inside of a cluster of something. So I've lost my mouse, basically. So this is uh, Chumeo, LA-A, D12057. It's got absolutely no designation aside from a generic constellation or cluster or something so you know this is essentially what you're looking at so every time we center this little reticle on something it gives us a little burst of stars and just one more let's go check out one of the spiral arms and let's see we have a sane l kdk d8 dash seven so we've got all these fine fine folks out here so I don't know if these are actual, uh, you know, legitimate stars or anything like that, or if this is just stuff Frontier's making up. But they claim that every star uh, that you can see in the sky is represented here, which of course may be true, but that doesn't necessarily account for every star in existence. So I'm sure a lot of this stuff is made up, especially once you get out to, you know, way out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, catch back up to ourselves. Archnar, Sol, yeah. and there's Laden. That's me. Okay. So <laughs> that was our uh, that was our quick trip around the galaxy, the universe. Sorry, not the galaxy. Um, and we're going to actually we're going to come here, Laden. Where'd you go? can't focus on myself. There we go. Okay, so we're back to our own little corner of the corner of existence. So I'll tell you what, let's go to let's aim for Core Sector. Huh. I don't know, every once in a while there's a couple the wolf systems. There's a wolf system that's really close Wolf three five nine actually, Star Trek fans is an actual system that's really close to Saul. I wonder if all of these wolves link up. So I wonder if I could just follow them. And I'm in light, and let's go to LHS 3470. Alright, so we're all fueled up and ready to go. Bulletin board probably has... Yep. Yeah, it's got to kill... <laughs> Black Crow and Volungbu. Mission will fail on ship destruction. Chances are probably good that... I'd get my ass kicked anyway, so... Plus, I don't have an interdiction... I don't have interdiction hardware, so if I saw him, I probably wouldn't be able to pull him out of... Uh, Super Cruise anyway. Kind of irrelevant. So let's go see what we're, uh... Oh, I don't think I actually... I'm get outside and figure out what's going on. I don't think I actually selected that system as a proper destination.
3470. Lock destination. Nope, it's right here off the start. Uh, port side. Port is left, starboard's right. Yep, alright, here we go. I don't know if this is an actual populated system or whether it's a anarchy system. I could end up dying. I don't could end up exploring. So I'm back on the throttle because you know you don't want to be full throttled up in <laughs> hyperspace because you'll smash yourself right into a sun. And there is absolutely nothing here. So galaxy map, where are we going? Al Shane. Yeah, let's go to Al Shane. We can go to Forbade. Yeah, let's go to Al Shane. There's apparently nothing here. Yeah, yeah, heat level's critical. I gotta get away from the sun. Come on. Come on, 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 come on. I'm heating up his mic. That's a change chart. First in the future, so I don't overheat. I don't have a. Uh, you can get a um, heat sink launcher, which will basically dissipate all of your heat, but it takes a kind of ammo, because you pack up your heat in a box and you can it. Okay, so let's see what do we got here. Unexplored, which is this guy right here. So let's point our nose at him. And actually, we'll bring out the... Scanner. Let's see what we can see. Ooh, this is an anarchy system. Fantastic. There's nothing here. Alright. Uh, for bait. Which is independent confederacy. Alright, let's get away from this sun. Before we engage our drives, we can sure that we don't generate more heat than is necessary. So L Shane A is an anarchy system. I'm sure there's probably stuff to scan here, but I'm not gonna stick around. I'm hoping that Forbid at least has a system. Uh, station. You know what I think I'm just gonna kind of abandon my sidewinder. I'm sorry, sidewinder. I've got enough money I could buy another sidewinder anyway. But I don't want to go all the way back, I don't think. I think I'm just going to start making the head right Alright, so the Confederacy of Furbade. Furbade System, Confederacy Industrial. So we got a lot of belt clusters, Effinger Port, Cook Terminal, and a whole bunch of exits. So let's go to this, uh, the Nav Beacon. Now, I was reading today that nav beacons are actually a good place to go and uh, find things to shoot at because it's essentially the place at which everything comes into the system for systems that have nav beacons. out here at the nav beacon and find all kinds of ships if you've got the <clears throat> this is a this is actually under jurisdiction of an authority so it's probably not gonna be a good place to you know just start popping people. Obviously if somebody comes through and they hang out and they're wanted and they start shooting at me then that's a different story. of miles, 2.1 million miles, 1.4 million miles, drop down to kilometers, and I usually 
actually watch the meter here on the left until the little blue line is actually in the middle of the, of the two blue blocks. Drop out. So yeah, we got some other people. Type 6 types. Sidewinder. Hey, Sidewinder. He's dangerous. He's clean. Robert Soden. He's a master. He's also clean. Wow, look at all these people. Eagles. Ceylon Powell. Mostly eagles. He's clean. Type 6. Oh, we got somebody over here who's good. Viper. This guy. Flintlock Eggleston. He's harmless, but he's wanted. He's also in a viper. He can kick my whoop, kick my butt. Let's see what this guy is. Torben Christensen, mostly harmless. He's unknown. There is someone up here. Just flipping out. Dan Vanderroll. He's a novice. He's clean. Thompson. He's an old type 6 transport. Salon Yeah, someone around here has got their guns out. Target shields are flying. Target shields are flying. Salon He's clean though. He's clean for this system. I've learned that uh, it says clean, but they're not necessarily clean. in this sector. So a sidewinder. Hey, sidewinder. Following you. Yeah, am I making you nervous? Yeah, it's all right. You're good people. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's... These are the people that hang out in the system. So you know what, tell you what, like I said, this is going to be a very short session. Because it is 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time here, so we're just going to head off to a port. And dock it, and we'll continue. Ernest, time. Started getting Effinger Point. Port. Effinger Port. So, continuing my, uh, you know, useless discussion, uh, you've got these two panels on either side. And what these do, uh, th this is your menu. This is your menu. Basically, you'll be using this one here a lot because this is how you can get around. Um, your navigation is your primary means of identifying what's going on who's around you, or the, the major stellar objects that are around you. So you've got uh, asteroid belts, planets, stars, stations, and also uh, destinations you can jump to. Uh, you also have access to the galaxy map and the system map, which you can, which we've looked at extensively. You've got your location and your currently locked destination. So uh, transactions, this would be if you had a, uh, if you had a mission. It would list the mission here so you could review it and figure out where you need to go, how much it's going to pay you, and the conditions for completing or failing. Contacts are people around you. Uh, I don't have the ASP actually scanned, so he's kind of uh, unknown. This, uh, this is the uh, system authority vessel. He's um, mostly harmless, uh, meaning he's probably never had to you know, shoot anybody. So we've got a couple other people here. You've got these other two menus which you can't access called sub-targets and cargo. So when you're in combat, you can actually sub-target. Uh, you're currently selected. Actually, you know what? Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, sub-targets here. So uh, we could actually shoot at these individual pieces of this guy's ship. And if we had a cargo uh, cargo scanner, we could actually scan what he's uh, scan what he's got. But we don't have a uh, we don't have a cargo scanner. Uh, I seem to have lost my. So, um, 
Yeah, if we had a cargo scanner, we could actually scan him. So if you were into uh, piracy, then this would uh, that would you definitely want a cargo scanner. Um, you'd want a, a, a limpet hatch breaker um, add-on for your ship, a component for your ship, which actually allows you to um, essentially electronically punch the target ship so that they uh, jettison their cargo. But of course. Uh, cargo, picking up cargo is illegal, so you'd have to actually have a, an anarchy system station that you can deliver it to. Long way to Effinger Port, so actually we're gonna just, let's just slow down so we can look at some of the other menus. Over here on this side we've got uh, a lot of stuff that has to do with our actual ship, and also some uh, some other information, actually, so I don't smash into anything. So here's my status. Uh, you can see that I am harmless, basically meaning I have I'm more of a danger to myself than I am to others. Um, my trade rank is penniless, which means uh, trade rank, I guess, you get from um, uh, doing things like commodity trading and taking uh, missions from the bulletin board. And explorer rank. Now, I've been doing exploring pretty much predominantly, so I've got a little, I've got some uh, some wings there on my on my badge. Uh, we also have the balance, uh, how much your insurance costs if you blow up. Uh, unlike the game that shall remain nameless, you don't purchase insurance up front. If I were to lose this ship right now with all of its fittings, it would cost me 16, uh, 1,654 credits to replace as is. So the more expensive stuff you put on your ship, the more it's going to cost you to replace it. Uh, my local bounty, I'm, I've got no bounty. I'm neutral. They don't know anything about me. Um, that's actually here in uh, the Forbade system. So um, right here we have Confederacy of Forbade here on the on the right, under Deep Space. Uh, those are the those are the authorities that you that you uh, have rep with. Uh, I also have uh, permits. So my region permits. I have no particular permits for this area, but I do have a uh, Sol system permit and the Founders World permit, which means. Um, if you want to get to Saul, you can get to Saul, but you might not be able to actually jump into Saul because you don't have the proper permit. And in order to do that, you have to uh, raise your faction standing with the Empire. Uh, as a as a founder and early early purchaser, I got the Saul system permit for free and this Founders World permit, which I'm not sure what that does. But you can actually cycle through here things. So I've got uh, neutral with the Federation, neutral with the Empire, neutral with the Alliance. And uh, here's what I've got for um, uh, reputation with uh, some of the locals. So the Confederacy of Forbade, Jet Natural, National, Forbade Defense Force, Syndicate, and Gold Legal Solutions. So as you, if you were to run into like a conflict zone or if you were to just start opening fire on some of the NPCs around here, uh, you'd be pissing off one of these people. So your, um, <clears throat> your reputation would go down with certain ones, but if they're in conflict with someone else, either here or elsewhere, um, you may actually your um, reputation may go up with someone else. So just want to make sure I'm yeah, my speed's low. Okay, so uh, right now you see that we've got the little the little uh, blue um, I don't know what the heck to call it Chevron I guess next to the Confederacy of Forbade. Um, that's where we are right now. You can see over here by Deep Space Confederacy of Forbade. Let's show you where we are. So, let's see, finance, bank account, cargo insurance. I didn't know you could buy cargo insurance. Um, ship insurance, 96%, which means I guess it would cover 96% of the cost of replacing my ship. That is also another perk for being an early adopter. 96%, I'm not entirely sure how the ship insurance actually shakes out for everybody else, but 96% uh, of the cost of any ship, I guess, that I blow up of my own uh, is covered. So that's why it, it, it's cheap for me to replace this, I don't know, what is it, $30,000 ship. Uh, let's see, statistics. This is all kinds of wonderful information about my history of play, including my, you know, how much cash I've earned, how much I've spent, how many things I've blown up, uh, how much bounties I've collected, how many times I've gotten fined, trading information, um, mining and exploration. I've visited 22 systems and I've earned a whole 28,000 credits from exploration, which is pretty good. But I don't have any level 2 or 3 detail scans because I don't have that gear. Modules. 
are all of the things that are equipped on your ship. So you can turn them on and off, basically, individually. So, oh crap, I was in FST and I turned my thrusters off. Yeah, that was not good. So now I'm going to gain a repair bill. And I want to turn those back on. That was stupid. Okay, well, at least we're not... At least we're not in danger of running into anything. Okay, so you can turn all kinds of things off. Um, basically, the... the uh, I believe these... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what all of these stats mean. I mean, we have E's, F's, and H's. I think those have something to do with the quality. And then there's the numbers. Yeah, there, there's a certain voodoo to buying gear, which I'm not entirely sure of. I have to read up about that. Maybe next time. Um, you can actually uh, set a priority here for um, something. I don't know what a priority means. Um, basically, I guess... Uh, no idea. Power usage, self-explanatory. Um, thrusters take up most of my power right now. Shields take up the second amount. Cargo, ha cargo hatch. Why? What happens if I turn my cargo? Nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, power just all some of these other things are basically just sinks, right? So you got a power distributor. Life support is if you go into the silent running uh, mode, you you shut off basically everything. Life support is what keeps your windshields clear and you alive. Uh, you can upgrade this to keep you alive longer. Um, good thing to have. Not something you want to sell. Frame shift driver. Self-explanatory jumps you from place to place. Sensors help you see. Fuel scoop uh, helps you collect fuel from stars. And your power plant, of course, is is what gives everything power. And the discovery scanner is what I've been using to ping systems. So you could turn things on and off here. Um, don't really have a need for messing with the cargo hatch right now. Only because I'm not scooping anything. If I were uh, mining or pirating, I would definitely need that. Fire groups is a unique uh, section where you can assign different, uh, different uh, we usable items, weapons, essentially that you connect to your hard points, uh, to different buttons on your control scheme. Now I'm using the uh, the SciTech X52 Pro, so uh, you know which seems to be the the X52 and I think the X55 are the the really popular sticks to use for Elite. So if you take a look at those, or if you have one of those, you'll you'll be able to, uh, you know, understand more or less which buttons uh, is the primary and which is the secondary. Um, if you've got a different joystick, your buttons will vary. If you're using the keyboard and mouse, God bless you, your setup will vary. But uh, what you can do here is um, pulse laser here is in fire group one, which means anything that's in fire group one will be accessible when fire group one is act is used. So, tell you what, let's deploy some hard points. So, here along the right side you'll see primary one, and it says pulse laser, and you've got two pulse lasers there. So if we look back over here to file group, you'll see that beam, uh, we, over here we have column one, column two, and then a plus. So in column one, we have two icons, both one. What this is telling me is that fire group one, which is the column header, I have two weapons, which are fired by using my primary button in which in my case for the joysticks case is the trigger. So when I pull the trigger on the joystick, which is the primary fire button, the lasers fire. Now over here uh, the basic discovery scanner you'll notice is actually under column two and that's the secondary set of weapons. And in this case it's actually mapped to button two. So the button two is um, I can't actually I don't know how to describe this. On the stick, uh, on the on the top side, there's a hat button right under my thumb. And then directly to the left of that, there's a small recessed button, which I really didn't actually know existed, um, you know, until relatively early. So if I were to actually switch over to a secondary set of weapons, um, I now have my D-scanner. So if I push this secondary button, the D-scanner is going to charge and it's going to fire off. That satisfying and frightening sound. Now, if I were to come over here and if I were to move 
this uh, nope, sorry. this over to primary group 1, what I've basically just done is switched my D scanner to uh, primary 2, but uh, it's still in the secondary fire group, but now it is act it's triggered by the primary fire of the joystick, which is my regular gun trigger. So I don't use that secondary reset button, I use the regular gun trigger. So that's... Uh, I actually like having it the other way around, that way I don't... Uh, I don't get stuff confused. So, let's see, we're going to retract our hard points. And that's going to go away, so I don't want to get in trouble if I happen to run into some place where they yell at me for having my hard points deployed. Cargo. Now, if you had cargo that you were hauling for a mission, it would show up here. Uh, it would have a special indicator that it was for a mission, and that's significant because um, I you cannot dump your mission cargo. I do not know if pirates can force you to dump it. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think I've accidentally tried dumping my mission cargo, but um, I don't think I was able to. So, if you were doing your own commodity trade runs, however, you could easily dump your cargo from here. And if you got hit with the, uh, if you got hit hit with the, uh, the cargo hold virus <laughs> from a pirate, and they made you dump your cargo, it would vanish from here. Now, this also has a secondary use in that if you have a uh, mining laser, you will need to also buy a refinery module. You can't buy one without the other. Well, you could buy the refinery module, but not the, uh, the, the laser. In either case, one is useless without the other. So when you buy your laser, you would put it under a fire group, and what you would then do is uh, you'd see your refinery here over in the left column and as you use your mining laser on the rock you'll find little bits of rock that are flying out into space and you use your cargo scoop to scoop them up and they go into the refinery. Now the refinery will scan them to tell you what you can extract and then you have to uh, make a determination as to what you want to extract. Refinery modules come with hopper sizes so there's a single hopper, there's a dual hopper, I believe there's a quad hopper. Each bin or hopper that you have in the refinery is one type of mineral you can extract. So if you had a uh, dual hopper model and you had, um, you know, I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's just say a, a single rock that ha contained both gold and silver, you could extract gold into one bin and silver into the other. But if you uh, pulled up another uh, rock that had, uh, I don't know, whatever the heck, cobalt or whatever the heck uh, type of mineral they have in this game. If you had a uh, two bin system, one with gold, one with silver, and you pulled up cobalt, uh, you would not be able to extract that cobalt because your two bins were already in use. And your bins will continue to be in use until you reach 100% capacity, at which point it takes all of the contents of that particular bin and turns it into one ton of in your cargo hold. So a single entry in the cargo hold is equivalent to one ton. So if you had four units of gold, that would be four tons of gold. So once you've uh, collected 100%, filled the hopper, and it moves over into the cargo hold, that bin actually becomes available for refining something else. So that's why if you're really serious about mining, again, God bless you, you must have the patience of a saint. Um, the four hopper... <laughs> Business, the four hopper refinery is, is definitely the way to go, but a dual hopper is the bare minimum I think you really want to have. So I don't have anything installed here. It's kind of a moot point. I'll be working up towards it uh, later. And then finally we have the, uh, the function section. And this is, uh, this is a lot of uh, administrative stuff. Uh, some of these things like uh, the cargo scoop and the landing gear. Actually, if I put my landing gear down you'll see that uh, landing gear has been deployed so I can retract it. A lot of this stuff you can come in here and you could do with your stick if you don't, or your keyboard if you don't have enough buttons to do it. Um, of course you take your eyes off the road in that case so it's I, I feel that it's better to have all that stuff map, mapped to buttons or keyboard but you get other um, other interesting things like uh, rotational correction which when you fly into the Coriolis star port uh, the big, huge... Actually, it doesn't matter. Any of the starports, aside from the platforms, I think. Once you fly into the into the belly of the beast, 
basically. The whole thing is rotating. So if you turn this off, uh, essentially the whole thing will continue to rotate around you. And when it's on, once you get inside the station, your ship will actually rotate with it. So you, once you level yourself off, uh, you just take your hands off the stick and you'll continue to rotate along with it. So everything will just look like normal. If you turn it off, everything will spin around you. So if you're really feeling adventurous, you can turn that off. Pre-flight checks is, is a good option for the first time you get in your ship because um, what it does is it pops up a menu that asks you to activate each of the items in the pre-flight checklist. So it will say, you know, something like uh, roll left, roll right, yaw right, yaw left, pitch up, pitch down. And what you have to do is essentially enact those controls until you get a checkbox in the box. And the pre-flight checklist actually contains all of the core functionality you need to, you know, fly around, land, and take off. Um, none of it is actually active while the pre-flight checks are going on, so when it asks you primary fire, don't be afraid to pull the trigger because it's not actually going to fire, it's just going to put the check in the checkbox. So, the thing is, is that it, once you turn it on, it doesn't turn off by itself. So you may forget that it's on, and you may land and go to take off again and get really annoyed because you forgot to turn it off last time. Uh, turret weapon mode. Now this is, uh, if you have turret weapons, in this case you can have, um, I think, three types of weapons. You can have fixed weapons, gimbaled weapons, and turret weapons. Um, fixed weapons, of course, are just like what I've got, you know, what I got here with my pulse lasers. They uh, they can't go anywhere. They go where I point the ship, more or less. That's that's all there is to it. Um, the the uh, I hope I'm not confusing this with the, with Star Citizen, but the gimbaled weapons essentially uh, can move around. Uh, turret weapons, however, I think can uh, have a 360 degree arc around. I'm not entirely sure. I've never actually had one of those weapons, so I'm not. I really don't know. Um, but you can actually switch how turret weapons operate here, I, for those that, for whom that means something. Report crimes against me now, the, and I learned this today in uh, figuring out, um, reading some things about bounty hunting. As you're flying through, when you get interdicted and you get pulled out by someone who is clean, um, that, like I said earlier, that means they're clean in this system. Now, they could be wanted under another jurisdiction, so they may look clean here, but if you get, if you get, uh, you can actually get a, something called the kill warrant scanner, and when you put that on your ship, you can actually scan someone, and it will actually query databases from other factions to see if they're wanted anywhere. So if they're wanted anywhere, you know, you could, you can essentially, um, how do you do it? If you can, if you can pop them without earning your own bounty, you can then take their bounty, go to the appropriate faction system, and turn it in for cash. So, it, they may look clean here, but they could be wanted somewhere else. So, if they're clean here and they interdict you, and they start shooting at you, if you have this turned on, they will become wanted in this system, and it will be reported, you know, system wide. Uh, if you turn this off, essentially, it's it just stays between you, I believe. So they don't necessarily get the wanted um, tag in this system if they were to survive. They would just kind of do their thing if they survived and took off. I think they remain clean. So if you, um, what I heard was that uh, if you keep getting, um, if you keep getting uh, pulled out of uh, super crews a lot and you engage in a lot of combat. If you tr if if a lot of reports come in that you're being harassed, the cops will show up, and they will start popping these idiots before, uh, before you can. A lot of times, so you actually won't earn the bounty. Bounties are actually earned on based on the person who fired the last shot. So you always want to be sure to fire the last shot if you want the money. So you can either turn this on if you want to be a good a good guy. If you really want to be, you know, keep everything in the family, you want to turn that off. Interface brightness, self-explanatory. Gun sight mode is leading or trailing, and that really actually deals with how you are able to shoot. Uh, leading, obviously, is, is what we're used to in traditional uh, space sims, where you, you fire ahead a little bit, and uh, that way you can, you can fire where they're going to be in a couple seconds. Sensor scale type uh, basically determines how 
um, when you look at this, we can't see anything here, but um, logarithmic actually uh, changes the size of the objects based on distance. So you can get a relative idea of how far they are based on the size of the things that you see on the scanner. Linear, obviously, um, basically they retain their entire, they retain their size, but the distance is relative more, so it's a more accurate. And then, of course, the ever-popular self-destruct. So that's that's kind of a rundown of the uh, the menus here. So uh, let's see, we still got Effinger port. Drive We're running out of fuel here, so let's get our act together. Uh, I've actually gone way over where I actually wanted to. This has actually been a good close to an hour, and I really didn't intend for this to be an hour. Unfortunately, some of it was technical difficulty, but then the rest of it actually turned into. Get more elite 101, I guess. So, which is good. I mean, if you're just picked up, if you're thinking about picking up this game, um, you know, learning how to deal with it now is is certainly going to be a, definitely a benefit. There's a lot. There's a lot to learn. Uh, like for example, right now, learning how not to smash into a planet. Always, always, always a good uh, good thing to learn. <laughs> how to not overshoot your target, that's that's a little trickier. I, uh, I have a bad habit of doing that a lot of times. So, we're just coming into Effinger Port. Or we will be. I can slow myself down a little bit. There we go. Let's see, we got a Viper System Authority vessel. Anaconda. Another Viper. System authority vessel, which is of course to be expected. We're, you know, hanging out around this fine-looking blue planet here. Planet of the Smurfs. And let's see, we're getting close. We're getting close. So the best time. So uh, here on the uh, on the right side of the scanner. You'll see our speed indicator. The little blue line there that uh, is kind of hanging out alongside the, the, uh, the little blue meter shows the optimal speed I should be maintaining if I want to uh, not paste myself on the side of the uh, station. And over here on the left, we've got a distance and speed indicator. you notice the speed indicator just went into the blue, which means um, I've got a good speed for the distance. The distance is going to pop into the blue, and then it's going to tell me that it's safe to disengage. So we got to get at a certain pretty good distance uh, before we drop out of Super Cruise and then we can uh, head into the system. So there we go. So this is uh, Effinger Port. It's an Ocellus Starport. Looks like a gigantic eyeball. So we do have some, uh, some system folks around here. They were around here. Huh. Alright, so what we gotta do now, of course, is we have to request... Uh, sell a starport request docking privileges. And they want to send me to docking bay 31. So now, you'll notice if we were to, as the station rotates, uh, earlier on we looked at the setting that uh, allows you to match rotation. This doesn't take in it doesn't go into effect until after you're docking to the station. So let's see. Let me figure out. Oh, there's 31 waiting for us. Nice lit up. Way at the back. I like way at the back. I don't like way in the front. I hate trying to land when you come right in the door because you have to basically make a nose dive. So you can actually fly around here, but you have about 10 minutes to make your landing, otherwise, they start shooting at you because, you know, you're essentially coming up their works. Over here, you'll notice, though, there's a pad right here. This is a large pad. Um, you'll see that there are actually other pads here which you can a they can actually activate. There's a small one right there up by the top. Uh, these actually will accommodate other people. You'll see that there's one ready for someone else right there. Probably an NPC because there's no other players around here. Um, 
all of these pads can accommodate different ones. A lot of the, the large ones here, you'll see they've uh, started taking in orcas, which is some really nice uh, yachts that were added in a recent update. So now we're coming in and we got to align ourselves with this properly. And then we're just going to drop ourselves down. Boom. And simple, piece of cake. So now that we're here, we got to uh, essentially do our due diligence refuel 47 credits mm. repair you'll remember if you were watching I noticed that there's one live viewer now hello live viewer um, earlier I was talking about all of the menus that you could that you can look at here uh, and I had accidentally uh, shut off my thrust uh, yeah where am I right here shut off my thrusters while I was in super cruise which essentially dropped me out of super cruise if you forcibly drop yourself out of super cruise you will wreck your ship so uh, actually it'll cost me 17 credits to repair all but if you look here at the individual repairs you can see basically that everything's pretty much screwed except for the radiator that's really random uh, so let's see so we've got um, You've got uh, regular damage, which is health, I guess. Uh, if we repair all, and we're all set. But you can repair wear and tear. Wear and tear, actually, is something that happens, if I understand it correctly, naturally. So the longer you own the ship, the more wear and tear you'll get. Eventually, if you don't maintain, you know, to repair wear and tear, your ship will fall apart on you. So this is, I guess, Frontier's way of of getting you to um, upgrade your ship, or to at least replace it by a new one. Uh, we seem to have earned 611 credits surveying the Alshan system, which had essentially one star and a whole bunch of exits. So we'll sell that for 611 credits, that's fine. That's just pays for my repairs, pays for my gas bill. Uh, the bulletin board here doesn't offer me anything. Uh, like I've been saying, I don't have a cargo hold in this ship because I sold it for the fuel scoop. Actually, you know what? The fuel, fuel scoop is doing me wrong. So I'll tell you what. Let's dump the fuel scoop and see if we can regain our two cargo port holds so we can uh, at least take some hauling missions. Because right now, exploration's okay. It's It pays off if I can find an unexplored system that has at least ten astronomical objects to scan. But those, that's like, I don't know, that's once in a lifetime. Not once in a lifetime, but it's pretty rare. So here's my beautiful eagle. Um, my hard points, uh, my pulse laser, my other pulse laser. So we got one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, my hard points are empty because I haven't found something that I wanted to put there. I could put another weapon here. Uh, I could put a mining laser if I bought a refinery, but this is not really a mining type ship. Uh, I could buy another pulse laser. Uh, earlier on, I was talking about the, how you read these things, and I'm not entirely sure I have to. That's my goal for tomorrow, is to figure out how to deal with the itemization here. Because we have things like class rating, integrity, uh, and then if you'll notice over here on the right, the lower right, we've got a bunch of uh, data in red with up or down arrows, so there's a whole lot of things to take into account <clears throat> when you're essentially uh, equipping your stuff, but this is a uh, this is a gimbaled mount. Okay, so signature tracking asset. This is a, a non-fixed weapon, uh, as opposed to the pulse laser here. The pulse laser. This is the one that I have. It fires straight ahead, so I have to turn the whole ship. The gimbaled uh, pulse laser uh, actually can move about on its own. So. Um, this is good if you're if you've got someone who's particularly adept at, at you know maneuvering. Uh, this way you can you can kind of keep them keep the, the heat on him while you're uh, while you're aligning your fixed guns to uh, you know basically take out his engines or what have you. So all of these wonderful things I could afford, but um, I don't know if I really want them. And then there's the super heavy weapons which I really don't have space or credit for. I also have a utility mount, which I can put in a whole bunch of nifty stuff. So this is the heat sink launcher. When I get too hot, I can jettison my heat and cool me down instantly. Good so I don't, you know, explode due to heat death. Chaff launcher, electronic countermeasures, those are, you know, if you get into, once you start, I'm assuming once you get into the 
uh, greater combat with larger ships. These may become a little more important, but right now, fighting Sidewinders and Eagles is not. If I found a, an Eagle with a rocket missile launcher on it, then I'm going to probably just run. Uh, the Kill Warrant Scanner is what I was talking about earlier. If you run into somebody who's clean in your system and you don't think they're necessarily clean, um, you can actually scan them uh, with the Kill Warrant Scanner and it will actually tell you uh, if uh, they're actually wanted in a t in a different jurisdiction, and uh, you, if you can if you can pop them, you can claim the bounty and bring that uh, bounty to the proper jurisdiction to get the payout. Frameshift Wake Scanner allows you to track the contrails of a ship that has uh, jumped uh, out into hyperspace. So you can, if you're actually trying to follow somebody, uh, if you're fighting a named character that you have to uh, collect for a mission, and they jump away, you could use this to continue to follow them. Cargo scanner, self-explanatory, and then we have different classes of, uh, of the same here. So each one of these actually gives you greater, uh, greater results. So the frameshift wake scanner, you know, for one million credits is, you know, top of the line. You could probably track somebody based on the their perfume. Uh, the internal, these are all of the things that are really hard to get. Not all of these things are available in uh, in all stations, so I guess anything with a plus on it means it's available. There's an upgrade here that you could get. Anything without a plus, there's nothing. So that's a, I just learned that right now, talking on this video. So uh, let's see, so I could upgrade the bulkhead and uh, this is for all kinds of wonderful things um, to give you a better structural integrity, I guess. So uh, this is your armor, more or less. Uh, power plant, we don't have anything for that, but uh, you know all of these things actually matter. So they'll give you uh, better efficiency at the cost of power and weight, and the heavier the ship, the, the shorter distance uh, you can go uh, when jumping, and the more fuel you'll use, so it's kind of a it's kind of an arms race. You know, if you upgrade with heavier equipment and you maintain your fuel tank size, you're going to get screwed because you won't be able to jump as far. You'll have to upgrade your fuel tank, which of course will add weight. Then, if you're taking cargo, that has an effect on how far you can jump too. So you actually have to kind of make sure that you're not, uh, you know, you may armor yourself up for uh, for uh, you know with the intention of going out bounty hunting, but you may find that you, your fuel tank is too small for you to actually leave the system. So, let's see, life support. This is the thing that actually uh, will keep you alive uh, longer. So, if you are uh, using silent running, or if you sustain a lot of damage, that's what will keep you alive. Fuel tank, let's see. Yeah, see, I don't... Uh, items already fitted. So I can't actually buy another fuel tank. If I wanted to... No, I can't. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. That's a lot of stuff. I was hoping that I could get another fuel tank. Uh, but no. Shield generator. Shields. Always important. Good to have shields, because shields not only uh, protect you from people shooting at you, but they will also protect you from collision damage. Uh, every pilot, I believe, has probably tried to hot rod their way in or out of a station only to find out that their trajectory is wrong and they bounce off the bulkhead. If you don't have your shields, if you don't have shields, if you don't have them turned on, and if you don't have power distributed to the shields, you will sustain structural damage which you will have to pay to repair. So shields are always a good idea. Um, if you want maximum fuel efficiency, you can take your chances, but the amount of interdictions that I've been running into now here in Gamma, running without shields is practically considered suicide. Here in this internal component, though, I could replace my shields with any one of these items. So all of these items here actually can be fitted uh, in some of these internal compartments. So we have our shield generator, our fuel scoop, and our basic discovery scanner. The discovery scanner helps identify stellar objects that are in the system. What I do want to do is I want to get rid of the fuel scoop. So I'm going to sell the fuel scoop and just get rid of that. So now this internal compartment is empty, so I'm going to buy something. So 
The hatch breaker limpet controller is what a pyro would use to force your cargo hold open. So you basically start venting your, your cargo out into space. Uh, the basic discovery scanner, I have one. That is what identifies astronomical objects. Uh, two unit cargo rack, which is what I originally had, <clears throat> but I sold. Uh, I can't get another shield generator because module type limit exceeded. I can only have one. Uh, this is a <clears throat> this uh, fuel scoop right here. Uh, it's class. It's a rating E class one. This is a rating D class two. So this would actually be better than the one that I just sold. <laughs> the docking computer is every new player's friend. <clears throat> if you don't want to deal with the irritation of landing manually you can get within a certain distance of a system you can request docking privileges and then it will tell you to take your hand off the stick and it will land you automatically <laughs> fantastic you know in 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 for trade runs in safe systems because you can essentially get up and you know get a beer or whatever while your ship docks itself uh, of course you know once you get start getting lazy uh, you know you lose your your skill at manual landing, so everyone should should land manually, you know, until they're comfortable with it, and then if you just want to be lazy, get the docking computer. Uh, then we have the refinery. <clears throat> this is what we need to use in conjunction with the mining laser. The mining laser will break off bits of rock. We use our cargo scoop to bring it into the ship, and the uh, minerals are then segregated into different hoppers. This one, as you can see, has a refinery bin, uh, one refinery bin, which means it's pretty much useless. Uh, shield cell bank. So <clears throat> this actually has you, uh, helps keep your shields um, charged. As you can see, it, it has no effects on collapse shields, which means if you lose your shields entirely, it's not going to help you. But if you can, if you got your shields down to about 50% and you managed to disengage, it would help you uh, get your shields uh, back up to speed faster. And the frame shift drive interdictor. This is what you put on your ship if you want to pull people out of super cruise. So you sit there, minding your own business, find somebody that you don't like. <clears throat> you fire this little bad boy up their tailpipe, and it essentially has a chance to pull them out of super cruise so you can, uh, you know, have a nice conversation with them or steal their cargo. And what else we got? <clears throat> Auto field maintenance unit repair basically, without having to land. Uh, let's see, and these are the more expensive stuff. So those are the items that you can put on your ship. Now I wanted the cargo rack capacity too, so I'm just going to buy that. Okay, so I put the cargo rack back on my system. So now I can at least carry some cargo. And finally we have livery. <laughs> Hot surface, do not touch. This is uh, the paint jobs. So we've got uh, three decals you could buy, and uh, you can apply a paint job. I don't have a paint job. Like I said, I was going to probably buy one at launch, uh, just so I don't have to keep looking at this green that everybody else has. I don't know about the decals. Um, might be getting some decals as an early adopter. I'm not sure. So, that's really way more than I actually wanted to go into tonight. Uh, an hour and 12 minutes by my clock. Um, didn't really actually get to do a lot of flying. Did a lot of tutorializing. So, um, <clears throat> hopefully tomorrow I will actually have some time to actually do some actual work. Uh, let's just actually see if I can get anything from the bulletin boards. Nope. Can't. Um, yeah, quantity three. Uh, actually, you know what? Mm, yeah, no, I'm gonna decline that. But uh, I was thinking maybe uh, buying another ship, uh, keeping it around here just for trade runs. Still at a loss as to what I actually want to do, whether I want to actually just keep exploring or whether I want to start engaging in trade runs. But I'll uh, I'll sleep on it, think about it, 